Hello all, welcome to the fifth episode of the Geometry Series. In this episode, we are going to take up some geometry questions. So let's get started with our first question. Uh, my recommendation to you, all of you would be, before you get to the solutioning of this question, take a pause, pause the video here, and try to solve these questions on your own, okay? Okay, so let's get started. So uh, we have a situation PQ, RST, uh, line PQ is parallel to line ST. Okay, this angle here, angle PQR is given to be 110 degrees. Angle RST is given to be as 145 degrees. And we have to find this angle, essentially angle QRS, right? So this is the angle which we have to find. Okay, so now uh, let's extend these two lines here. So let's extend ST and QR, okay? And let's say that these two lines intersect at a point A, okay? And let's say this is B and this is C. Oh, cool. Now, PQ is given to be parallel to ST, hence PQ is parallel to AT. I mean, this is just the extension of ST, so these two lines are parallel. Hence, angle PQR would be corresponding to this angle 110, right? So angle CAS would be equal to angle RQP because they are corresponding angles, hence this is 110 degrees. This is 110, so the other side would be 70 degrees, right? Because the total is a straight angle, we have talked about it earlier, 180 degrees. So 180 minus 110 would be 70 degrees, right? Now, this angle is pretty straightforward, right? This is already given to be as 145, so this angle would be nothing but 180 minus 145, which is 35. Correct. So now if we focus at this triangle, we know this angle 70, this is 35, 70 plus 35 is 105. So the third angle would be 180 minus 105, which is nothing but 75. So this angle is 75. Now when this angle, angle ARS is 75, this angle would be 180 minus 75, because again, this is a complete straight angle. So angle QRS would be 180, minus 75, which is 105 degrees. So angle QRS is 105 degrees. Okay, this is our second question. Okay, let's move on. So question two, uh, we have two lines ln M, L is parallel to line M, and this angle over here is given to be at 2x plus 15. This angle here is x degrees, this is y degrees, and we have to find the value of y. Correct. Now, very clearly, right, L is parallel to M, so these two angles are corresponding to each other, right? So 2x plus 15 is equal to y, right? So 2x plus 15 is equal to y, right? And that's what we have to find essentially, right? We have to find the value of y. Now, we can write y in terms of x because y is nothing but 180 minus x because this angle is x so y would be 180 minus x so 2x plus 15 is equal to 180 minus x and we can solve for x and so once we know x we can find y so let's do that we bring x to this side we bring 15 to this side so it becomes 3x is equal to 180 minus 15 which is equal to 165 divide by 3 on both the sides we get x is equal to 55 degrees, right? So x is 55 degrees, and so obviously y would be 180 degrees minus 55 degrees, which is equal to 125 degrees. So the answer is 125 degrees. Again, pretty straightforward question. These two lines are parallel. So these two angles are corresponding to each other. 2x plus 15 is equal to y. We wrote y in terms of x. We solved for x, and then finally we got y. Now question three, DA is parallel to BC, right? So these two lines are parallel. And AB bisects angle DAC. So AB, this line bisects angle DAC, right? So what is angle DAC? This whole is the angle DAC. What is the meaning of bisect? Basically, it means that this line cuts this overall angle into two equal parts. That's the meaning of bisecting, correct? So if this small angle is given to be A, it means that this angle would also be A, right? Because that's what uh, the question is saying, that AB is bisecting this overall angle into two equal parts. Hence, the overall angle, angle DAC, 
is nothing but 2a, correct? 2a degrees. Now, if you see da is parallel to bc, hence this angle would be corresponding to this angle, correct? These two angles are corresponding and hence equal, so this angle is also 2a degrees. Then obviously angle BCA would be nothing but 180 degrees minus 2A degrees, right? Because this overall it forms a straight angle, hence angle BCA is 180 minus 2A. So 180 minus 2A is the answer for angle BCA. Let's move on to our fourth question here. We have a right angle triangle ACB. Angle ACB is 90 degrees and uh, angle CBA is 30 degrees and these two sides are equal. So DB is equal to AD, and we have to find the length of AB, right? Now, a couple of things here. So first of all, they've given the lengths of these two sides, DB and AD, and if you notice, both of them are equal to two root three. Essentially, both the sides are same length, hence this triangle becomes an isosceles triangle, correct? Now, in an isosceles triangle, the two opposite sides are same and the two opposite angles are also equal. And if this angle is 30 degrees, this angle would also be 30 degrees, right? Now, if you look at triangle ADB, this is 30, this is 30, hence the third angle would be 180 minus the sum of the two, so 180 minus 30 minus 30, which is 120 degrees. So this angle is 120 degrees. If angle ADB is 120 degrees, then this angle would be 180 minus 20, which is 60 degrees, right? So essentially, if you look at this, triangle ACD, right? This is 60, this is 90. Obviously, then this would be 30 degrees, correct? So we got a special right angle triangle here, right? We know that 30, 60, 90 is a special right angle triangle. And in a 30, 60, 90, all the three sides of the triangle of the right triangle are in a specific ratio, correct? And if you see, this is how it is, right? So for a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, if the side opposite to 30 degrees is X, let's say, the side opposite to 60 degrees is X root three, and the hypotenuse would be two X, right? So this is the way in which the three, three sides behave in a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, correct? Now, if we look at this triangle, we have got this side, using this proportion, we can let's say find AC, right? And once we find AC, if we notice the bigger triangle also forms a 30, 60, 90, and we can apply the same rule again to the bigger triangle. Let's see what I mean by that. So for a moment, let's focus on triangle ACD, right? So this is 60, this is 30, and this is two root three. Now let's say that the length of AC is y, right? Let's say that the length of AC is y. So we will say y divided by 2 root 3 will be equal to x root 3 divided by 2x. x root 3 divided by 2x, right? Or basically root 3 over 2, right? So the side opposite to 60 degrees, the ratio of that side to the hypotenuse is root 3 over 2, correct? So we can simplify for y and we get y is equal to 3. Right, you do cross multiplication. Essentially, you do 2y, 2y is equal to 2 root 3 times root 3, which is 2 times 3, which is 6. Divide by 2 on both sides to get y is equal to 3. So essentially, the length of AC is 3. Now, if we look at the bigger triangle for a moment, right, this is the situation, correct? So this is 90 here, this is A, this is C, this is B, this is 60, and this is 30, and this side is 2, we just, we, sorry, 3, we just found, AC is 3. And the hypotenuse of a 30, 60, 90 is the double of the side opposite to 30 degrees, hence the side AB would be three times of two, which is six. Why? As we just saw here, right? If the side opposite to the 30 degrees is x, then the hypotenuse will be two x, right? The side, basically the hypotenuse is twice the side opposite to 30 degrees. In this case, the side opposite to 30 degrees is three, 
Hence, the hypotenuse would be twice of 3, which is 6. So just to quickly reiterate, what we did was that we saw that the sides, these two sides were equal, hence it was an isosceles triangle, hence this angle is 30, this was already given to be 30, hence this would be 120, and this angle would be 60. Once this angle is 60, this would be 30, and it becomes a special case of a 30, 60, 90. We used a 30, 60, 90 to find the length of AC, and then we looked at the bigger triangle, and we again applied 30, 60, 90 to find the length of hypotenuse. Okay, so let's go to our fifth question here now. So we have the right angle triangle ABC. Uh, angle BC is 90 degrees. And we have three squares uh, with each side of the triangle. So we have a square 1, we have a square 2, and we have a square 3 with each of the three sides of this triangle. The area of the first square is 80 square units. The area of the second square is 150 square units and we have to find the area of the third square. So we have to find the area of the third square. So area of the third square is what we have to find, right? Now, uh, obviously this is the square and if the area is 150, then it means that each of these sides would be square root of 150, right? Each of these sides would be square root of 150 because the area of the square is side times side. Square root of 150 times the square root of 150 is 150. With the same logic, this side would be square root of 80, right? So this side is square root of 80, this side is square root of 80, each of the sides is square root of 80, correct? So this is also square root of 150. Now we can use the Pythagoras theorem because obviously triangle ABC is a right angle triangle. This is square root of 150, this is square root of 80. So the side AB would be, or AB square would be square of this plus the square of this. Now square of this is 150 because 150 square root is square of square root of 150 is 150 plus uh, 80, which is equal to 230. So by the Pythagoras theorem, we are able to find the AB square. And if we realize that the square, of the area of the third square is nothing but AB square, because the area of this square is this side times this side. Each of the sides are equal, obviously it's a square. So essentially AB square is the area of the third square, which is coming out to 230. Okay, let's move on to the next question here. So ABCD is a square. Uh, with the area of 4x square and we make an equilateral triangle with this side so BCE is an equilateral triangle and we have to find the area of this equilateral triangle right uh, ABCD is a square the area is 4x square so each of these sides let's say side BC would be square root of 4x square which is equal to 2x right so each of the sides of the square is 2x. So this side here is 2x, right? Each of the sides of the square is 2x. It's an equilateral triangle, so each of these sides will also be equal. So this will also be 2x and this will also be 2x. Now, if you remember, we talked in the past that the area of the equilateral triangle is given by root 3 over 4s square, right? There are other ways of finding the area of the triangle. I mean, we can find the altitude and then we can do half times base times height. But in case of an equilateral triangle, we can use a ready-made formula, root 3 over 4 S square, right? S is the side, each of the side of the equilateral triangle. In this case, S is 2X, right? So the area of the equilateral triangle would be root 3 over 4, 2X whole square, which is nothing but root 3 over 4 times 4X square. 4 and 4 will cancel, so the area of the equilateral triangle is root 3x squared. Okay, so very quickly, this is an easy question. We have a square, the area of the square is 4x squared, so each of the sides is 2x. So each of the sides of the equilateral triangle is 2x. We know that the area of the equilateral triangle is given by root 3 over 4s squared, where s is the side. Now here s is 2x, we just put in 2x here and we solve for it and we got root 3x squared. Okay, so let's move to our last question here. Uh, 
ACDG is a rectangle, uh, BCDE is a square, uh, this length CD is 16, this overall length AC is 40, and we have to find the area of the shaded portion, ABEF, or essentially the trapezoid. Right? So we know that the area of the trapezoid is given by half times base 1 plus base 2 times the height. Right. So in this case, uh, this is one base B1, let's say, this is the other base B2, and this is the height. Right. Now, now BCDE is a square, so each of these sides is 16. So clearly this is 16, this is 16, and this is 16. Right. And this BE is nothing but the height as well, right? The height of the trapezoid. So H is 16. Right. Now Let's find out the B1 and B2s. B1 is AB. The entire length is 40. This is 16. So 40 minus 16 is the length of AB. So B1 would be 40 minus 16, which is 24. Okay. Now, the only thing left is B2, right? This length FE, correct? Okay, now this is 16 and this is 24. So if we can find this length, then we can subtract this from 24 to get B2. Now in this triangle, this angle is given as 45 degrees. This is a right angle triangle because this is a rectangle. So this will also be 45 degrees, right? And we know that in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, these two lengths are same. Essentially they will be the same because this is an isosceles triangle as well, correct? This is 16 by virtue of being rectangle. Hence, this side GF would also be 16 because this is 45, this is 45. It's an isosceles triangle. Opposite angles are same, opposite sides are same. So B2 would be this GE, which is 24 minus 16, which is eight. So essentially, we have got all the values here, so the area of the trapezoid would be half times 24 plus 8 times 16, which is equal to half times 32 times 16. 2 times 16 is 32, so 16 times 16 is 256. So the area of the trapezoid would be 256. Again, just to quickly reiterate, since BCDE is a square, each of the side is 16. So this is 16, hence the height of this trapezoid is 16. Overall length is 40, this is 16, so 40 minus 16, so we got this length as 24, right? Now in this triangle, this is a 45-45 triangle, so this is 16, so this length GF is also 16. We already find, found out that AB is 24, so AB is the same as GE because it's a rectangle again, right? So 24 minus 16 is 8. So we got both the bases and the height and the area of the trapezoid is 256. Okay, folks, hopefully you liked the video and you found the examples meaningful and helpful. Keep practicing and in case of any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at info.mathleaps at gmail.com. See you in the next session and in the next practice test, we will focus specifically on circles. See you then.